I'm gonna go live here with Steve Shankle, the mortgage uh, genius here. Let's see, let's get him on here. Steve, there we go. Home Funding Corp. Steve Shankle. Can you, can you hear me is the question. There he is, wow. The man I, of the hour. Yeah, well, you know. So let me know when you're ready to go. We're, we're live, buddy. We're okay. live. All right. So um, I was just kind of doing a really quick introduction. I mean, I, I consider you the, mor the magical mortgage guy. I mean, what you did for me was like, nobody would touch me in the industry because I had some things on my credit. And uh, you made it happen, man. You, you got me my properties. So... Well, you know, when you get when the business gets busy, some people just want to work on the easy stuff, you know, and uh, we, we try to work on everybody's loan. There's having been in the business so long, there's little things we know that we can do and um, it takes more time. And, and, you know, sometimes time is money, I guess. But but then again, getting somebody the house they want is, is, is really an important thing. And when when I heard that you guys had gone through some stuff in the past, I, I just felt like I wanted to help you out. And so we went the extra mile. And, you know, it worked. You're, you're in your house or your condo. Penthouse floor right here in the mountains. I mean, you know, it's, it's interesting because I've, you know, because I work for a tech company and um, we do volume of business, right? Um, right? At least before, right? And... I mean, not today? Well, you know, the rates, you know how they are right now. And uh, cash offer is, you know sometimes utilize and then trade trade up you know if you don't want to wait to get the next house and be contingent we put a cash offer on it so that's that's kind of still working a little bit but you know um i know people in the business for 20 years and they they couldn't help me at the time or they said they could and once we were in escrow which you know they they couldn't deliver Right. So we were we were in escrow with this one property here, and uh, thirty I think it was already thirty days, and then the loan I think, guys. I think it was more than that. Was it more than that? Yeah, it was. You know, more like forty, and then uh, we closed in I think another thirty. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it was. It was challenging. We had to write a lot of letters, and um, the underwriter had to underwrite it manually, and I used automated underwriting. But, but you know, if if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. But you know, what's crazy is is that, you, you know, you found that your underwriters found a provision in the FHA guidelines, right? Am I correct? Huh? Well, it's not. It's not just that. It's it's also the company's willingness to uh, underwrite a, a manual because it takes more time. Yeah. The other thing about that is being it was FHA. It's one hundred percent audit, so you know that uh, HUD is going to pull that file. They're going to go through with the fine tooth comb and make sure we didn't make any mistakes. And so some companies are scared to do that also. So it, it just depends on how confident your people are. And we, we, we want to help people. We don't want to just make money. We do want to make money. We don't want that to be the end goal. We, we want helping people to be the end goal. And there's a lot of people who could be helped if people are willing to, to adopt the attitude that, you know, getting uh, people into houses is, is what our goal is. Right. And, you know, I've partnered with a lot of and networked and have relationships with a lot of top producing realtors uh, in, in Southern California. And they tell me, you know, a couple of them, Trina, um, sure. they say you guys can make if anybody can't do a deal, you know, and there's a last there's, there's some kind of hope to make it happen. You guys are the ones that could do it. And this is what they all tell me. But there's one other thing is that if we can't do a deal, we'll tell you right away rather than keeping escrow 30 or 45 days like you were. Because, you know, that that's even worse than not being able to do the deal. N none of us can do everything. You know, if somebody comes in with a 400 credit score, I'm, I'm not going to be able to do it, at least today. But right. we're going right. to work on the credit and do it later. But the other thing is to know the business well enough to know what you can and you can't do and be able to say, you know, no, I can't unless you do this and this and this. And I, I can't tell you how many times I've had agents come to me and say, um, you turn this file down and such and such lender says they can do it. And I'll say, well, then take it there. And then, you know, 30, 45 days 
week later they came back and they said, I wish I would have listened to you because we drug our people through this and they threatened to keep the deposit and, and the deal didn't work. Right. I think that was even the case, uh, you know, um, at we, yeah, I know you're uh, one of the preferred lenders for fly homes. Right. Uh, and um, yeah, I know, I remember that a couple of clients, uh, they thought, they were gonna shop around and I'm like, you know, I mean, this guy does volume, he, he makes things happen and, you know, he's not gonna waste your time, so, you know. Well, there are, there are certain people out there have the mentality that the only thing that matters is the interest rate. And um, I guess if you have perfect credit, and perfect job, uh, history, income, whatever, then that's probably okay. But there's, you know, there's just more to it than that for most people. Unfortunately, we live in a day and age where not too much credit. There's, most people have some sort of challenge, whether it be a gap in employment, um, some some lates two or three years ago, some collections, um, you know, student loans that are reporting late, even though they want things like that. All about knowing how to handle those kind of things. Right. So you know, as we mentioned, you know, you guys push the limits. You're always growing. You're for the people. You're not all just about the money. Um, the, I, I hear these. Is, is there's these new programs out now where about solar you can what yeah, is that all about we got the thinking I, I i don't know about you but um looking at my electric field this last couple of months uh last year at, the, at this time or you know during the hottest part of the summer my electric bill was like 450 dollars a month which was a lot right this year it was 663 dollars wow so that's you know that's like a 50 percent increase and they say it's going to get worse and so um we found a program there's actually through the federal government it's, it's an fha program it's called the fha em or energy efficient mortgage and that program will allow us to finance solar on top of the purchase price of the house so what wow. that means is that you are purchasing the house let's say you purchase it for four hundred thousand. okay mm -hmm. we can go up to 120 percent of that to finance the solar and they qualify as though there was no solar on there so even though they're going to be paying a higher payment because the loan amount will be higher, they don't have to qualify for that. And so, you know, the thinking is, um, if you eliminate the electric bill, even in our uh, higher interest rates we have at the moment, um, that's still gonna make things a lot better than they might have been. And then, you know, a year from now, two years from now, whenever that the rates drop again, and then they're gonna have a great situation that they want to bill and they'll have a, a really, you know, good interest rate and a good payment. Yeah, so you're saying, uh did I hear that right? One hundred twenty percent. So if it's a four hundred four hundred thousand dollar home, it's four hundred twenty, or is it? Am I right? No, no, one hundred twenty. Well, one hundred twenty twenty percent four hundred uh, would be a, would potentially uh, four hundred eighty. Four hundred eighty. Wow. Potentially. Now it's going to depend on what the solar costs. If the solar, you know, only costs thirty thousand, then then we write it up to you know four hundred thirty thousand or or whatever. Uh, so it's it's going to be according with the solar cost, but the provision is to go up that high if if need be interesting yeah i know i my i think my brother-in-law he got the tesla solar on his property and uh, i think it was like all all inclusive seventy five thousand. but that was with you know everything probably batteries actually and then you know if you have a a tesla electric car which he plugs into the home i mean right there you're saving even more so well, it's, it's all it's all part of probably what we're going to need to do to survive considering that the economy is definitely slowing down. And so, you know, we got to be more creative. I, you know, okay, the rates are high, but I still want to buy a house afford it. Well, that's going to be one of the issues. If, could you afford it more if you didn't have electric payment? Right. Right. So $600, that's pretty steep. I mean, that's a, that's a, yeah, no, I, all year, but for three months I paid that. And now, now, you know, now that's cool enough and maybe I'll be down to 400 now, you know, but right. still, a lot so is there any qualifications with that or is it just kind of like the standard uh um... qualify just like you would for a normal fha loan no real difference now as far as the solar goes uh, there, we do have to hire someone that does a survey on what it's going to cost and so forth and fha has some tests that we have to run it through to make sure that uh, the solar price is not too high and that it benefit the borrower and so forth but you know, that's not really been much of a problem. So it's just part of the process. It's kind of like, yeah, you're familiar with the 203K loan, right? Yeah, yeah. But they, you know, they have to have an appraisal, plus they have to have a, a guy come out and do a survey. Well, this is a lot less intensive than that, but it's the same thing where HUD wants to protect the borrower and make sure they don't get taken advantage of.
Interesting, interesting. So there's definitely a lot of regulations there, right? I mean, there's... Yeah, I mean, you know, the federal government's going to insure a loan. They want to not just insure the loan, but they want to the borrowers getting what they're supposed to get. Right. Because, I mean, let's face it, in any business, people can take advantage of people. And, and FHA's done a good job of, of regulating things so that, um, you know, we all have to charge pretty much the same thing, things like that. Right, right. That's, I mean, that's that's definitely good for the borrower. And, and uh, yeah, it keeps you guys on point. I mean, that's good. Well, speaking of that, um, I know people getting taken advantage of. Um, I hear about these, you know, reverse mortgages. Now, okay. I know you guys, what, what, what's your what's your take on that? I know you guys do that. Well, you know, you, you really look at what the borrower's objective, okay? Um, at whatever point a takes a reverse mortgage and they pass away, um, you know, a reverse mortgage will definitely be a negative hit, okay? They're, they're going to get less money. There, there's rumors out there that the bank takes the home through. Uh, but, but what happens is why it's a reverse mortgage is the payments are added uh, to the loan every month. Whatever pay payment that borrower would have made will be added to the loan. That's why it's a reverse mortgage that grows instead of shrinking. You know, most mortgage, as you pay the interest, you know, the principal and principal, the principal is paid down. But you know, the, how you have to look at the reverse, I was just at a, a senior kind of an expo uh, last week. And the issue with the seniors is, you know, what's my quality of life going to be? Can I, can I afford to eat? I mean, this right uh, market where we're seeing you know, food prices of electric, as we mentioned, um, who knows what all else is going up? These people are on a fixed income. And so the real question is, you know, can, do you have enough to make ends meet every month? And if, you know, these people have a lot of equity in their house, a lot of them have been in their 20, 30 years. Some of the ones I talked to had their house free and clear. Um, if they're not making ends meet, well, reverse mortgage is a way to do it. The reverse mortgage, they give them some where they can, you know, do repairs, pay off bills, do whatever. Um, or the other option, and met a lady on, on Thursday um, was doing this. Uh, she um, X amount of money per month. Uh, each month that was also added to the mortgage, but it was like uh, added income on top of your social security. And so it's a way to increase your uh, income or, you know, I don't know whatever term you want to use where it's not really income, but, but, it, but they, they treat it um, and they made all the difference in the world. Really? So is there um, a certain amount of equity that they have to have to qualify for something like that? Yeah. It's a really complex formula that we I honestly don't completely understand. What happens is that there's software programs that we have that we input all the, the particulars in their age, um, the, the value of the house and, and their you know expenses and so forth. And it calculates how much money they can be given. And then you, you can calculate it you know, as a lump sum. Uh, you can also do it as an equity line so that they don't take the money. But there's an equity line there the roof goes out and all of a sudden they have a you know fifteen thousand dollar roof they got to put on well they just pull it out of that equity that's on that equity line and, and they pay for it and that's or as i said before the, the the monthly income where they have you know 500 or 600 or 700 coming in every month wow well i think that that right there would be a lifesaver to most people because yeah know, i mean we've we've been in situations like that in the past you know my wife obviously you know with her story that she had cancer and the economy crashed and I mean, not really having any alternatives, uh, you know, options on what to do. And uh, having that, um, instead of selling your house and losing everything and getting capital gains taxed, I mean, that could be a huge option for someone who's older or maybe someone who needs elder care at home and uh, or help, you know, nursing care and uh, still want to stay in their house and not lose it or, or get put in one of these, these homes, you know? Right. Yeah, it's, you know, it's just... Uh... It's something that's, I think is gaining popularity. Those of us that are in that age bracket, our numbers are growing. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, it's a way. Like, if I wasn't still working, uh, I would maybe consider it myself because, you know, uh, you know when, everything's fine when you're working. But when you get on a fixed income, all of a sudden it's like, uh, you know, you can't afford things as you used to afford. And it just changes your whole perspective. Right. And I don't think, and uh, even in my family, I don't think people really know what the numbers are when you're older. I mean, yeah, 
But in regards to what you need, right? I mean. Well, and you may retire and, and things are great, you know, for the first couple of years, but all of a sudden that we hit a time like now with inflation and now it's not great. And, and what do you do? You know, you're, you're, you've been retired several years. You can't go back to your job and you know, what do you do? You know, and this is one of the things you can do to, to make a difference. Right. And then you know, but this way, if you work all your life to afford to buy this house and now, you know, you're in a, a place where you're not working, why not use what you work so hard on to keep you afloat, keep you living a lifestyle so you don't feel like, you know, you're, you're just on the edge every month and at the end of the money, there's no, you know, or end of the month, I should say, there's no money left, you know. And right. Just, it's just one of the ways to look at it. Yeah, I mean, to me, I think that would be a lifesaver. I mean, yeah, it can be, and you know, it just depends on the person. Everybody's different, and you know, if we, we certainly don't ever want to tell somebody something you have to do because it's their decision, but um, it, we should just try to give them enough information so they can make a really informed decision. Yeah, and I think a lot of people have other options today too, right? Like they could rent out a room, they could do Airbnb, they could, you know, yeah, make, yeah, uh, maybe all the use the money to do. First of all, they do have to live in the property. That is one of the restrictions. Oh, it is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The property and the lender finds out about it, then they will call the note due. Okay. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah. I mean, well, even if, if uh, we, this is kind of weird, but we've had situations where uh, spouse, where, where let's, there's back in the day when we did reverse work, a little different today. Uh, we, sometimes they wanted a certain amount of money and get it because one of the spouses was too young. So we leave that spouse off and leave the older spouse by themselves because how much money you get has to do a lot with the, how old you are. The older you are, the more money you can get because the idea is you have less time to look at it. Kind of morbid, but, but you know, that's how it works. Right. And so we've had cases where, uh, you know, the wife didn't go on and then the husband passed away and she said, what do we do? And we'll, we'll just refinance it. And it was a time... Uh, where the market had had fallen and, and the house wasn't worth enough for her to do it, and they got a, she got a notice within thirty days saying you need to sell this house or refinance it, and they apparently are notified when death certificates are filed um, that you know that this loan no longer meets the criteria and something's got to change. And I, it's amazing how connected they are. That um, it's <laughs> one of those things you got to think about. But the the new guidelines of the reverse is even if uh, a spouse is not old enough, they will allow uh, that spouse to be on so that that can't happen again. Cause I think there was a lot of that that happened back. We're talking about 50 plus years ago. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So that they don't, they won't be forced to sell and or homeless. Right. I mean, if there's no they, equity, left. they can live in the property, the rest of the life that they want. And then the kids will have to, you know, do something with the property once, once the, the, the other spouse passes away. Right. So with, with most of the reverses, they still, they can still inherit, the kids can still inherit something, right? It's not, all the equity's not taken out, it's only a, just a certain amount, right? Reverses are, are written in such a way that there's plenty of equity in there because look at, look at this point of view. You're the lender, do you want to take a property back that's upside down? And the answer is no. Right. And so they're written in such a way that, that even upon the death, unless we got into a, just a severe recession where prices were through the floor, um, there would be plenty of equity to still get a, a real amount. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. And so there's a lot of confusion out there. There's a lot of room going around. You know, the bank gets the problem. Um, various other things, and, and none of them are true. I, I think, you know, there's a lot of kids who don't want to dime. They, they want the house for themselves. And, um, you know, especially being at that um, I, I, we have to look out for the seniors, you know, that, that they're well taken care of. I mean, why would you want to parents almost like they're in poverty, you know, and can live pretty well? Right. And that can get really expensive. I mean, I know about that, about home health care and, right. you know, the elder care. I mean, you, you, you're talking five, six, seven thousand from what I see in here, minimum oh, of a month. Which, yeah, I know that. So that's a lot. Yeah. So how about um, first time home buyers? Do you, I know you have some kind of programs where you've helped a lot of people with that. What's the, your take on that? The first time home buyer 
programs have kind of suffered a little bit um, since the rates have gone up. Most of these uh, programs are given by nonprofits, and the rise of the interest rate has clamped down on some of the supply. And so we used to be able to get 5% to be applied towards down payment or closing costs, say, on an FHA loan. So an FHA of 3.5% down, you'd another have another 1.5% closing costs. And that's kind of dried up as of right now. And as we continue talking, uh, I, I'll keep an eye on that change. I can let you know. At the moment, the down payment students or first time homebuyer programs, whatever you want to call them, are, are a little a little tough right at the moment. They're tough. How about uh, VA loans? Because I know we had a lot of clients with the VA is, is like always, you know, 100% uh, financing, but you have veterans. And um, one of the things I get asked all the time is a, a boyfriend and girlfriend, and he's a vet, can they both go on? No, they would have to get married in order for them both to be on there because they both on the VA loan have to be either, you know, related by marriage mm -hmm. or you can't do it. Or maybe you could have two veterans that were both veterans go on, but you cannot have a veteran and a non-veteran except for marriage uh, on the same loan. Interesting, interesting. So, wow. Wow, I didn't know that. So you have to be married, otherwise you don't qualify. Wow. I, I'm sure there's a lawsuit coming some sometime. <laughs> <laughs> but for right now, and it's, I've been in the business 41 years, and it's always been that way. Uh, you know, you, you do have to be married. So you've been in the business 41 years? Is that really? 81 I started. Wow. So what's, what's I mean, a lot's changed since then, but... Is there anything that's better now than was back then? Well, yeah, yeah, the biggest thing is how long it takes to put a loan through. When I first got into business, uh, if you were doing an FHA loan, the file was either, well, you know, it was in this area, the, um, I was in the, I actually was in LA County then, but uh, if it was in the Inland Empire, it was underwritten by FHA and Santa Ana, which is still there. And if it was L.A. County, it was underwritten by FHG in L.A., which is no longer there. And they actually underwrote the files. They did not let companies like our, our own company underwrite them. And so when you wrote an escrow, you had to write a 90-day escrow. That's how long it took because, you know, once you got submitted to them, it would be 30, 45 years before they'd even look at it. Wow. That's... It, yeah, it was, it was pretty... And there wasn't an underwriting that day. There, uh, there was no FICOs. They just let me late payment pay like that um, there was you know there was no fedex in those days there was no uh, <laughs> i remember <laughs> i was in the business five or six years when we got our first fax i was like what's a fax machine what's this thing and wow. you know, over the phone lines it was like no come on that's impossible <laughs> but you know that i got to see all those kind of things come up and so some things got better, some things got worse. Our, our loan application, one page, you know, now it's like 15 pages. So, you know, it's anything else. So some things are better, some things are worse. So it, it just depends how you look at it. Right. Well, DocuSign is definitely better than a uh, fax machine, right? I mean, that's a... Uh... You know, I guess. I always worry, though, probably because I'm old school, but I, I worry about fraud and things like that. And, and I, I can't imagine that the... The, the the crooks aren't going to figure out what around that and that you know they they say no it's not gonna happen. i i hope i hope they're right it just like something that would be very easy to to uh, manipulate right so uh what what is the sweet spot or what is the the ultimate fico score i mean what is the benchmark where well, for the most part if you're 741 or higher it's it's pretty much as good as it gets. So, and and we see FICO scores um, having a, a, it didn't used to be this way, but uh, it all kind of changed during the crash in you know 20, 2010 when um, all of a sudden we saw interest rates adjust for FICO scores. So the difference between someone who has say a six forty and a seven forty one. Oh, it could be a half a percent in the interest rate. And so the 741 is, is a, a very good rate to, uh, on your FICO to shoot for because, um, you know, you can pretty much do anything you want. Opens a lot of doors. I mean, that's the real report card in life, right? Your, 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 that's the real report card in your life, right? Your, your credit score because it affects yeah. everything, right? I mean, and you guys do a rapid rescore as well, right? Not today, maybe to take the time, but 
I would like to, on a, on a later uh, visit with you, uh, talk a little bit about credit cleanup and stuff like that. That would, yeah. I think, good. definitely. Yeah. We, I've actually done quite a bit of that, and I'd like to maybe educate people about it. You know, what, what if you have, I've had a problem, you've been asked, what can we do to fix it? Right, right. Because you guys do all that rapid rescore stuff, right? Where you can. That, and we work with a credit cleanup place that that uh, uses legal means to re uh, get people's credit a lot better. But what starts out. Right, right. Well, good. Well, I'm glad we uh, were able to get you on today uh, for a brief, uh, I know it was kind of yep. the end of the day kind of situation. And um, uh, I do, uh, I know you have some material too that uh, I think I saw an email about the solar uh, refinancing and all that. That would be good if, uh, if you could send that. Uh, if anyone's curious about it, uh, I could send that to you and, or you can call Steve. We can give him your, your information. Uh, I really consider you the best in the business, just so you know. Um, you. And, you know, you, uh, you're you like the most creative, legal guy that could just, I, I think you can make anything happen. I mean, I know if you can't, you'll tell people, which, you know, a lot of mortgage. I think no way more often than I'd like to, but, you know, it's just. Yeah. yeah. But you make it happen. I mean, it was miraculous what happened with me and as well as others. And, you know, like I said, some of my other partners who have used you over the years where they had literally Mission Impossible situations, uh, you did it. So it, I've, I've done my share of rescues from other lenders, that's for sure. Even p people like um, uh, Quicken Loans, uh, we've, we've taken stuff where they just cookie cutter, easy stuff and, you know, turned a loan down and we said, no, it's doable. Let's just do it. You know, we'd close them out. Right. And you do other states too, right? Like you help me with property in Florida. We're, we're, we're in 14 states right now and continuing to grow and, and we'll, we'll be adding more. So, but right as of right now, 14. States. 14. Is Hawaii one of them? It is. Just oh, recently. wow. My second home where I wish it was. I, I go for, once a year. For us all, right? Maui is the place. Always, always Maui, yeah. Always Maui. <laughs> Well, good. All right, Steve. Well, it's such a pleasure talking with you today. And um, can we do uh, absolutely, yeah. Right. Pick a time, or we could we could call and, uh, and and do this. And I really think people need to know who you are and what you do. And uh, you can really help people. And um, the more people that that uh, will know you, the more that you can help them. So let me let me just say one more thing before we go, and that is when we get into a rise in interest rate like this what i find especially after 41 years of doing this is that people quit working they just give up and they say what's the use rates are too high nobody can afford it. you know we're still getting people into houses um i'm this is where i go after this because there are real estate agents like yourself all of a sudden the guy they used to call to get them to or whatever isn't returning phone calls and or if he does return the phone calls he's going no nah, i can't do it no nah. You know, this is the time for me to, and to any other real estate agent listening to expand your business because other people aren't working. Right. No, that's a good point. I mean, we're, we're not just uh, in and out of the business. I mean, like you said, you've been in it for 40 plus years and uh, I've been in and around the business for the last 20 years and my family's been in the business and um, I, I think there's more opportunity to help people when things are going down or when the economy is not so great and inflation is going on. You just got to get more creative, right? Which takes, well, you know. I mean, I guess you have to look at the business as kind of like a pool. And, you know, there's a pool of business out there. And if we all stayed doing what we're doing, there's not enough business. But if a bunch of people urge and quit working, then suddenly that small pool is big enough. And that's how I look at it. Right. Well, it's no surprise for you, too, because like I said, you know, you could have stopped, like for me, example, you could have stopped at my loan, right, and said, well, well, we can't do anything here. But like, you know, you did a manual underwrite, which I've never even heard of in that time, right? I mean, I think that was the thing before. But then you found a provision. But, but it, it, there are times you call for it, so. Right, right. But that provision that you found, uh, made it happen. And I don't know anybody. I mean, like I said, veterans in the business at other lenders, um, they just, they said, sorry, we can't help you. So I'm forever grateful for that. Just so you know. And, uh, 
I really send everyone your way because if anything, you're going to tell them the truth. And if they want to go somewhere else, that's, you know, that's their, that's their deal. But at least they know where they're at. And I think it's funny because they go other places, they're going to see that you were telling the truth or you know, you know, what, what options there were the whole time. So they either come back or, or who knows, maybe it just didn't fit. But, but yeah, I can't wait to get more into all this stuff. And I'll, and, I'll have uh, more next week. Next week? Yeah, I'll have some more information we can talk about. Okay, perfect. Well, uh, it's a pleasure as always, and uh, God bless you, and uh, be safe. And um, I look forward to uh, doing many more with you and for us helping a lot of people. You got it. Hi, Steve. Well, take care. Bye-bye. All right, bye-bye.